Are we live? Hey. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> welcome to our first live. Oh, yeah. Welcome to our first live. And we just want to say, hey, DIY PC family. Yes. And we're, well, we're glad that you're here. Mm -hmm. And this is our very first time going live ever. Yeah. <laughs> with, you, with you guys. And um, we just wanted to try something new. We're always encouraging you to do something new. So we're doing something new yeah, and exactly. going live. Yeah. And uh, let's see. So we want to do a little icebreaker. So we have a couple yeah. of people here and we want to know uh, if you could put a one in the uh, chat comment, box, yeah. in the comment box, if you um, have already used peel and stick, yes. uh, anything with peel and stick tile, peel and stick backsplash, anything with peel and stick. If you've done that, put a one in the comments. And if you haven't put a two, but you'd like to do it. Yes, and you can also hey, marriage. Hi, and marriage you can, and motherhood. <laughs> you also can uh, let us know where you're from if you'd like to say hello and hello mm -hmm. to everybody, and um, we appreciate you coming on. Hey. So, um, one thing that we want to talk about, or what we're going to talk about in yes. this live, of course, is peel and stick. Yes. And then at the end, we are going to announce our winner for the giveaway which is a $100 gift card to Lowe's. So we are so excited about that. Oh, yeah. Let's see. We have, um, I think it's Takia and Extreme Tatika, Fight. Tatika. Tatika, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Extreme, Extreme Fight. Extreme Fight. Yeah. Flow With It. Bonita, thank you for coming on. Hi. Hey. This is so excited. Sue from Brooklyn. She's has a one, so that means she has done peel and stick. Yeah. And we're going to just uh, go ahead and get into it. If you have a question about anything, hey. go ahead and write it in the comments or the chat. And we have M. Bab on there. M. Bab is here. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. And... Darius and I will try to answer. He's going to work the chat room. Yeah, I'm going to work, work and, the chat with my magic. Um, <laughs> if you have questions, like I said, go ahead and put them in. But we'll yes. go through the questions that we have seen in the comments. We've tried to, you know, answer them in the comments. But we'll try to get, you know, more in depth in it here. Okay. So our first one that we get is, can you tile, peel and stick tile, over tile yeah okay that's probably a question we get asked a lot about peel and stick mm -hmm. so do you want to start with it or you want me to just go ahead as far as can you do that yes so yeah. first the the quick answer is yes you can tile mm -hmm. over tile and we did that uh we have a video about that it's when we tile we did peel and stick mm -hmm. over linoleum or vinyl old vinyl roll tile in our bathroom you know that old sheet the the vinyl sheet that they used <laughs> yeah. to put in the old houses yeah that's what we had and we we, t we um did peel and stick over that yes one. now so, the reason why we yeah. did it um we tiled over it on that one is because the tile was in pretty good condition mm -hmm. it was old and it had like scratches well i wouldn't say scratches it, it had like um it just had scuff marks yeah like you know? scuff marks but as far as the condition of it on the ground, like it it stuck oh, on the ground. It was good. It was it was, it was nice and flat. So yes. that was the best thing about it. If you want to tile over some tile, um, vinyl tile, make sure it's in a good condition, meaning that it's flat. It's not peeling up or curling because we had some uh, in our kitchen that was curling at one point. So it we worked. had to take that one off. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Yeah. So tiling over tile. One thing that you definitely want to do is to make sure your surface is clean and dry. Dry. <laughs> clean and dry to tile over tile. Exactly. And um, we used a TSP cleaner and some people have even scuffed, scuffed the tile first um, with sandpaper. The old tile, not the, the old tile. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the surface, the old tile first, and then they cleaned it, washed it and just let it dry. And then it's all ready to tile. And we keep saying that you want to make sure that your your uh, tiles are dry if you do any cleaning of the previous tile. Your subfloor tile? Yeah, the subfloor. Because yeah. you want to make sure that it's dry so that the adhesive will stick to it. And adhesive works best when it's on a dry surface. Yes. 
Now someone put in there, what about ceramic tile? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. that's a great question. Now it depends on what type of ceramic tile you have. If you have that old school tile, ceramic tile that is really, um, what's the word, like bumpy? Yeah, it has ridges and bumps like inside of it. Like you yeah. had, it, well, I had it in my grandmother's house. <laughs> it, was, it was, I think it was like pink or something, but there's like little tiles and they had a, a lot of ridges in it. And they also were grouted too. Yeah. Sure they, most I of think, them were yeah. grouted. Yeah. So if you have that, there is a substance that's called like a, um, let me see if I wrote this down. It's like a, it's like a filler that you would pour over the ceramic tile and it kind of fills in all of the gaps first. Yeah. It makes it, it, it makes it down. so it's a smooth surface. So you don't actually have to peel or pu pull up the, uh, the ceramic tiles. You can just actually put this substance on it. It'll make it flat and then you can wait until it dries. Yeah. It's a floor leveling compound. Yeah. And I think it's pretty inexpensive. Now, we have not tried that over ceramic tile because we haven't had that yet. But I have seen people do that. And so I think it, when I see them do that, it's like just a mixture mixture that they um, mix with water. And it's kind of like a lighter than cement. Yeah. 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 And then you just pour it over there and let it level and settle. Yeah. Then you wait. Now, in that case... I think I think you're ready to go after that. I don't think you need to clean it or add water or anything. Oh no, no. No think, water. All you have yeah, to do is just let just, it dry. Yeah. And then once it dries, make sure it's level because the best thing for peeling stick is level. You want to make sure that every we found that out. Everything yeah. must be level. Yeah. So and, and your peeling stick will be fine. Yeah. So that kind of goes into another question that we ask about <laughs> um <laughs> adhesive. Sure. Do you need adhesive? with peel and stick. And we bought some of the adhesive that we use. Um, however, we have never needed extra adhesive on the floor, piling peel and stick. Yeah. <laughs> we have used peel and stick on the wall for accent walls. So um, some people do use a lot of adhesive, but uh, I don't. We don't recommend it because for us, the adhesive that is on the back side of the tile works really well. Oh yeah. Do you have which one? I think we have get? a little. I think we have a little. Um, we have some samples of what we use yeah. actually in the videos. Okay. So here, so, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. Here is it. Put it up to the camera. Can you see that? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. This is the flooring tile that we use. And we the tile? That's not the tile. I mean, I'm that's, sorry. I'm that's sorry. The adhesive. That's not, the adhesive. Where am I at? That's, that's not the tile. That's the adhesive that Look, we use. Cover my face. <laughs> yeah. So this is the adhesive that we used in several of our videos. And this worked really good for when we put things on the wall. Yeah, because it has a, a, a moisture control. Oh, sorry. A moisture control. Yeah. And that's for the wall. But let me see a tile. Let's see. A okay. regular tile. Well, here we got like um, no one with appealance. Yeah. Okay. So here's the hexagon tile. That's appealing stick. I don't know if you can see it. So it they, me, it's over, it's, yeah. It's darker, this way. Okay. okay. The adhesive on the back is mm -hmm. pretty sticky, mm -hmm. and you don't want to uh, kind of interfere with the adhesive when it's on the floor. Um, you want it to be able to react to your subfloor. So. Some people have used, I think, too much adhesive on flooring tile when they're putting the tile on the floor yeah. and they're saying it moves and they're having problems with it because you really want this adhesive that's already on the back of the tile to, to do its thing. Do its job. Yeah. And so then that goes with the 100 pound roller. Yeah. We didn't even know anything about a hundred pound roller. Never heard of it. <laughs> never heard of a hundred pound uh, me, roller. Put something in the comments. To let me know if you've ever heard of a hundred pound okay, roller. Okay, wait. What's that? Do a one if you one heard if you of have, it. have, yeah. And two if you've used one. Oh. And three if you've never, you don't even know what we're talking about. Three is, <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. One, I've used it. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. What was two? I forgot what two was already. <laughs> Uh, okay, just one and three. Have I used it or have I? I don't even know what you're talking about. Just do yeah. that. So, <laughs> oh, let's see goodness. what they say about that. All right, Cause, so because I I never heard of a hundred a one hundred pound roller no. until we did that particular and project. That was in the kitchen. Yeah. So we found out about it. 
-hmm. from the manufacturer of how we can make sure the, the towels are nice and level because we wanted to do a great job. And we found out that you could rent one from yeah. like a Home Depot Lowe's. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty inexpensive. I think it's like 15 or $20. Well, I now know. they have they have rollers that you can get on Amazon that are kind of like hand rollers. Yeah, they're like $25. So it's, yeah, it's like $25 to $30. And, and it's not even, it's not 100 pounds, but you can use your body weight yeah. to do it. So and that's good. Yeah, and people are using that for peel and stick backsplashes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. for peel and stick wallpaper mm -hmm. for the floor pops. Um, and the reason why you want to do that is because where's my little, what did I do with my tile? Which one? I, my I hexagon probably, tile. I take it back. Okay. So yeah. the reason, the reason why you want to do that <laughs> is because let's say you stick and your floor is kind of bumpy or you're, you're tiling over it and it's like this. So the hundred pound roller is going to like smush, smush the tile and smush the adhesive all together evenly on the floor. Yeah. It, there's a chemical inside of it. And I didn't Not know in the that. Not in the roller. Not in the roller, but in the adhesive. There's a chemical. So it's a chemical combining yeah. and coming together. And so that's what helps it to stick onto it. The pressure. I, I didn't really know that there was like mm -hmm. that dynamic in peel and stick. Oh, there's a science to it. Yeah. So you really yeah. want to have that pressure. So in one of the videos, um, I just was walking over it. We didn't have a yeah. pound roller. That was the one we did the tiling over the tile. Actually. Yeah, because I was weigh, in our bathroom. I weigh way more than a hundred pounds. Yeah. So I was just like, so we just walked all over the tile. Just, just took our time, just walking over it. So we didn't have the hundred pound roller no. at that time, but we we both weighed well, over 100. Yeah, so. <laughs> it, was a, it was a smaller area. And so we were thinking that's kind of hard to put a hundred pound roller in. So if you had like a small area, like a laundry room or a small bathroom, I think just like walking, walking on it could do well. It can. You have yeah. to, I think just knowing that you're supposed to do something like that really helps. Yeah. Look, you don't have, just style. We have people that have used it. Yeah. I, I don't think you just put it down and just think it's going to just stay there and, right. and last on it because it will slide. If you don't push it down and then have something uh, heavy, you know, like a weight or yourself go on top of it, it will slide over time. So you need that compound to do its job. Yeah, someone like, said uh, the only the only roller I know was the one my mother used in the kitchen, <laughs> and I've seen people use that too. Actually, yeah, if you yeah. put your weight on that, you the, could it was do like it. a wood yeah. a wooden yeah. one, mm -hmm. and they did so. That's the one where you bake your cakes with. Okay, yeah. so it assists yeah. the chemical reaction of the adhesive. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. That's what it's trying to do. It's trying to just push it down and mm -hmm. and put it in there. Yeah. Right. Okay. And stick and stick. Do a job. Peel and stick. Okay. So, but actually, uh, did we say anything about um, the concrete or anything? Well, we're going to go to that one. So, so okay. right. yes. Yeah. So the first one was, can you tile over tile? Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes, you can tile. Yes. Over tile. Wait, Sue said it's showing in the background as you speak. Is it? Is it really? Look at that. That's hilarious. We were oh. prepared. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's that's good that you noticed that, Sue. Okay. Yeah. Now the next one is. Can you tile? Um, can you tile over tile, or do you, or do you need an underlayment? Okay, we're going to talk about. Can you tile over tile, or do you need an, an underlayment? underlayment? That was the question okay. um, that we had. So, mm -hmm. let's see. If your surface, if your subfloor is pretty, is in good condition, yeah. and subfloor meaning it could be the tiled floor. It's whatever you're going to tile on. Your concrete is okay. Mm -hmm. Or the wood floor wood, is okay. Yeah. If any, if everything is okay, you don't need an underlayment, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. That, well, you don't need an extra. You underlayment don't need an extra because underlayment. that is the subfloor. You can tile right yeah, over. Yeah, you it. can tile as oh. long as it's flat and and it doesn't have any debris on it. Then yeah. you're good to go. Okay, so mm -hmm. there was a case we mm -hmm. have used an under underlayment with peel and stick tile, mm -hmm. and that is the Fourier video. Yeah. You want to say what we did with that, like why we needed an underlayment? Well, we had um, we had wood rot in our foyer, so we had to pull up the old uh, wood planks. Wood planks, uh -huh. and <laughs> we had it took some time to do that. And that adhesive that was on the the, uh, the old planks, that was that old school adhesive that was not meant to come up at all. Mm -hmm. So we took a chisel, we took everything, and went after it and pulled up as much as we could, but it was too lumpy. It was too gritty. There and was a lot of it. 
a lot of adhesive, from... it just wouldn't come off unless you have a professional yeah. uh, piece of equipment. So that's when we went to Home Depot, actually. And, and wait, wait. So, yeah. and so instead of getting yeah. professional equipment, we yeah. just looked at it and said, well, let's just put something on top of it. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. Which sometimes. was an underlayment. Yeah. And, um, but that's what DIY is about. It's yeah. about, you know, figuring out a problem, going through the box, around the box, yeah. upside down. You know, I mean, you're just going to figure it out. So it, it, it's going to, you know, you're going to do what you have to do to make it easy on yourself. Yeah. So we, so went, we, we went to, I, I think we got this one from Home Depot. Mm -hmm. um, and we just asked, like, what underlayment do we need for peel and stick? And mm -hmm. there is a special kind. You're yeah. not supposed to just get like um, a cart. What are those? What are those? Um, like a, like what you would put down for a flooring in a shed or something like that. Yeah. There's a special kind. Like yeah. Said, there's, um, there's a special type of underlayment for peel and stick because remember that chemical adhesive wants to adhere to something. And so if you have a, a, a wrong type of underlayment, it won't stick. Correct. Because of what the wood is treated and we with. We didn't know that. So if you have the wrong underlayment and you try to put right, your, your tiles down, yeah, don't it's not going to stick. Don't get any kind of yeah. underlayment. And I think that mm -hmm. causes some people to have problems with peel and stick as well. And we have the um, the link to that in our description, yes. description of our video. We'll have um, in this in this live underneath, we'll link all of the videos. We'll, we'll put it in a playlist. But this one in particular is the foyer. Mm -hmm. And we did a special video that says underlayment for peel and stick because yeah. I, I forgot the name of it, but it's a, mm -hmm. it's a certain kind. Yeah. All right. Let's check. Do we have any other questions that we need um, to answer? Let's, let's see. see. I used a grinder mm -hmm. with a concrete removal disc. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That removed all of the things on it. Yeah. And I had it. You know what's funny? Uh, Frugal Survivor. I don't think I've ever used a grinder. No, not yet. That's something that we'll have to do. That's going to be our yeah. first. Maybe. I don't know if you guys noticed, but on all of our videos, that's the first time we've done each one. Either Pretty we, much, yes. and if we did a, a flooring twice, we didn't do it in the same room or we didn't do it the same way in that room. Yes. So every project that we've done on our channel has it's been the first time we've, we've done, it. done yeah. it. But we're so, starting to get to be peel and stick. Uh, <laughs> Professionals, now. Yeah. yeah, peel and stick professionals. <laughs> exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. so then the other one was tiling over concrete. Oh, yeah. So um, in the kitchen video, we did pull up the old vinyl tile. And the reason why is because it was curling. Yeah. It was in really bad condition. It was bad. Um, yeah. We bought, we bought our home as a bank-owned property, so mm -hmm. there was a lot of fixing up things, projects that we could do. And we were tired of looking at it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, it was just yeah. that type of floor where you're just like, I'm tired of looking at this thing. You can't keep it clean. Yeah. Um, and so we just had to get rid of it. And this, that was the first time we tried to uh, pull up a, a, a flooring yes. that tough. Because it was in the kitchen, I believe, uh, before we owned the home, it, was, um, it had water that probably got down on it. So it was hard to pull up the adhesive and the the peel and stick tile yeah. actually it kind of shredded and what it did was it do? Just, it did some know. kind it of was, weird thing to it. It, it was you tried to pull it up. And it it ran into the laundry room and mm -hmm. where that was, it was it yeah. it was divided. Yeah. Torn. So if you look at that video, it's yeah, it was and so pretty bad. The nice thing about yeah. that project was our yeah. first introduction to mm -hmm. peel and stick. It was yeah. our first introduction to an option because we mm -hmm. were like, uh, what do we do? We don't know how to uh, put down a whole roll of <laughs> tile. Well, like, I, I, we, how did yeah, we never even, put how down. they even get it in there? Like, it, it was so wide. Yeah, how did I still don't know how they do that? Do you, does anybody get, know how do they get that big old roll inside inside the house? house and have it still stay intact, looking like it's one? Yeah, sheet. I wonder if that's something that you so. can only do when you first build. You know, when you're first building a home, yeah. then you put it down before you like put the walls in or something. I don't know. And the centerpieces and everything. Yeah, like we were just, the, yeah, so. we were just like, we need yeah. something because mm -hmm. to get flooring done in your kitchen. Now, I think we got an estimate for um, making over our kitchen or doing yeah. the cabinets and the flooring. And it was like over $15,000. Yeah. So we were like, yeah. But no. that was just for refacing the cabinets. 
So yeah. they they no, I thought it was for no. That was just for refacing the cabinets, and so we were just like, wow. But our okay. floor is yeah. it, the flooring options were very expensive. Yeah. So we saw peel and stick, and mm -hmm. we were like, wow, mm -hmm. they had luxury mm -hmm. vinyl peel and stick. Yeah. Um, the difference between like peel and stick and luxury vinyl peel and stick, mm -hmm. I think is that it's a little bit thicker it's and thicker. it's groutable. Yes. Okay. So we're going to talk about that. It's, it was, so there's, there's peel and stick that's groutable and peel and stick that's not groutable. And right. there is a difference when you look at them. For flooring. For we're flooring. Talk, we're just talking just about peel and flooring. stick for flooring. Yeah. So we saw a, um, what is it? A oyster travertine? Oyster. Am I yeah. Saying travertine. Right? Yeah. And, like um, we were like, that is some nice tile. You oh, mean, yeah. I think it was like a dollar a tile, mm -hmm. maybe. And we could do our whole floor uh, very budget friendly. Yeah. So then we learned about uh, caulk, not caulking, I'm sorry, grouting. Yeah, grouting. That's our best friend. <laughs> then, we, then we learned about like the designs that you could put tile down. Because that tile was a rectangle tile. What you mean by when she says design, yeah. <laughs> she's talking about the patterns. Yes. The pattern, the patterns in the way that we did it. Because in our foyer, we did a diamond shape. In our bathroom, our small bathroom, the first time we did it, it was just straight, straight squares. The second time we did it, we used the hexagon tiles. Mm -hmm. And then we also did the brick pattern in our bathroom, our, our master bathroom mm -hmm. and our, um, our kitchen. So... We, we just want to experiment yeah. and try the different patterns and see if they would work. There's so. also like a way that mm -hmm. you can lay tile to make a room look bigger. So some suggest that whatever your other flooring is in your house, that you continue that pattern in through, let's say, the kitchen. For us, we actually did the opposite because the way that our kitchen was situated if we laid our tile kind of long way, elongate it with the kitchen, it would make it look a little bit longer with the brick pattern. Mm -hmm. So really it's your option. It's your choice of which there's no right or wrong because it's your home. And um, that's the best thing about being yeah. a stick. And, and the best thing about DIY is that you get to do what you need or what you want to do to your own home. And you get to do it at your own pace. Yeah. So. And some people ask like, well, did you, why didn't you put like ceramic tile or a higher quality tile in your kitchen? But we were replacing the vinyl tile that was there with a luxury vinyl tile. And for us, it was an upgrade. It was really nice. Mm -hmm. It updated it and, and it was something that we could do ourselves. We didn't have to have contractors come in. Exactly. Cut um, the cost. It cut the cost oh, extremely. Yeah. extremely. Yeah. And it looked pretty, people did not know that it was peel and stick. Nope. If you not look at, at that video and you look at the flooring at the mm -hmm. end, I mean, we weren't even trying to, tr you know, trick anyone or fool anyone. We were just like, this is this is a great product. It doesn't crack. It's vinyl. Yeah. It's very easy to clean. Or replace if you yeah. have to. Yeah. We have young kids. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. running. They're roller skating. <laughs> they're doing everything on our floor, dropping yeah. stuff. So mm -hmm. the durability of it was just something that- It's been kid tested, let me tell you. Yeah. That. It was so. nice. <laughs> so I think one question we had was, what's the best product to- Clean, to use the clean old, old tile. tile before yeah. adding peel and stick on it in the backsplash. Is that is that the TSP? The TSP definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it stands for. Like try. It's a long word. TSP. T it's it's. But long. it's TSP, and yeah. it's in the video for the backsplash. It's in the video for our, our, our um, master bedroom. I our master it's bathroom. One. It's in for that one. It's because, definitely in our backsplash video though. Yeah. Because you want it's a degreaser. It's mm -hmm. a degreaser <laughs> it's mainly a degreaser it's a cleaner but it's mainly a degreaser it takes all of that rough grease off of there <laughs> rough grease yeah i mean well you know it, it it's kind of it, you would think that grease is slick but it gets hard over time yeah well so if it's hard or soft you want it off. yeah either way you want it off and it gets it off so you have so, to wear gloves oh definitely wear your gloves and you don't want to have that near children it's a very no, no. uh it's not like it's not kid friendly. Yeah, it's not eco friendly. Yeah. This is a this is a cleaner for real, and so okay. that's um, what we use. Let's see. If you want that stuff off, then you if you want yeah. anything clean, you can use that. 
TSP. TSP, right. Mm -hmm. So back to luxury vinyl tile, our first mm -hmm. introduction to it. Um, it, it. Well, actually, our first introduction to uh, vinyl tile was in our small bathroom. That's right. I keep forgetting that. That's when we used it. We had our small bathroom and we needed to change the small bathroom. So there's a story behind that. I mean, the tile on that one, yeah. it was uh, the original tile was just like the kitchen tile. It was like a vinyl sheet yeah. and we wanted to pull it up. But the funny thing is, after we pulled that up and I was staring at the concrete, that was my first time looking at <laughs> an actual concrete floor, thinking to myself, well, who's going to fix that? Because I've never done that before. If you want to see and that so, video, that's like our very, that's our very first, first video, video that we, I think we did that in 2016, uh, 15, 15. And we only did one video because we were just like, we, we weren't, we weren't YouTubers. We, weren't YouTubers, we just so. were like, oh, we just post a video up on YouTube for people well, to we, see. Well, we posted that one <laughs> because we wanted to give back to the person yeah. who helped us figure out how to do that in the first place. I wish I could remember which video it was. It was a flooring video that a gentleman did. And he helped me to uh, understand yeah. how to use do peel how to stick. use peel and stick yeah. and how to, you know, lay it all together. And after I did that, I was like, wow, I, I actually did that myself. Yeah. The funny thing about that project was that the wall was uh, a little bent. So we use spacers. And when you're using spacers, you have to be extremely... Uh, what is the word for like it? you have to line it up line, everything must up. be lined up yeah. together everybody everything has to be lined so to have everything lined on three sides and then that fourth side has a bent wall it threw me off because i didn't even know our walls were like that yeah so let me know if you have some bent walls or if you even know that you have them because you sometimes you don't even know you have them until you do a project like right that. especially flooring mm -hmm. um flooring will flooring uncover projects. all of your crooked walls and if you have an older home Settling, it's nothing, it's nothing like out of the ordinary that your wall is not completely straight. You mm -hmm. know, after a home settles, that that happens. But um, you're right, the peel, that was the first peel and stick. Someone asked and, if it was um, TSP uh, deck cleaner. No, it's not it's deck not, cleaner, it's, deck it's just cleaner. TSP it's just, cleaner. So yeah, that it comes video, in a red and white like box. You box. Can, yeah, I think it is. It's like a powder. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they have it in liquid form yet, but like yeah. I said, it's in the it's definitely listed in the video of our backsplash, the peel and stick back backsplash, and you'll see a picture of it too. Mm -hmm. So um, back to the kitchen and luxury vinyl tile and grouting. So we uh, one of the questions was, do you have to grout peel and stick tile? The answer is no. No, you do not have do to. Not. You don't even yeah. have to. Grout, groutable peel and stick tile. That's correct. It's just an option. Mm -hmm. It's a personal preference. Yeah. You know, if you like grout, like I personally liked the grout look. And so that's why and when you see in our videos, most of them, I use the grout. Now it is harder to do the grout because you're using the tiles. I mean, you're using spacers. spacers yeah. And when you use spacers to, to do that, everything has to pretty much be precise. And so I pretty much like that look. And so yeah. I said, I'm going to figure out how to do it. And the funniest thing is that when we did the hexagon uh, one in our bathroom, our small bathroom, that was probably the hardest one because we yeah. had to have spacers all around each tile. So every time we did a tile, yeah. we had to put spacers around that tile. Then we get to all a, yeah, about, yeah, it. all sides of it, <laughs> get about what, 10 of them around. And then we, no, take six, them up and try to stick yeah. them. Yeah. Or is it no, no, I'm talking about not not about that. I'm talking about the uh, amount of tiles that we put down on the ground. On oh, the yeah. And then we would stick them to the ground so that we can get to the next section. Right. And so that was a little tough for, for that particular job, but it's beautiful. And maybe, and maybe mm -hmm. if we, I don't know, maybe we wouldn't have tiled, if we had known yeah, that it was, it, it was, here. yeah, it was so hard to get all of those. I mean, when you're, I mean, I wish I, I could see it without Yeah, the, we, we yeah. may have just stuck them close together. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people that have used the hexagon, hexagon tiles that comment, they didn't grout. They just stuck the tiles close together, which yeah. is an option. Yeah. You can do that. So then that goes to our other question that we get mm -hmm. is um, how do you waterproof tiles or people were having um, some flooding from the toilet, maybe, or some, some of well, that some people was, were having water um, get under their peel and stick tile. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, one thing it's easy to repair 
that that's another thing. But yeah. we grout because it kind of seals the tiles in. It works as a barrier. And so that's the yeah, one like thing a that we, yeah, we're yeah. a waterproof barrier. That's one of the things that we like about it. That's another reason why I choose to uh, grout. Grout and use because, the spacers. Yeah, and use the spacers is because it's like a waterproof barrier. You don't have to do that. You, the funny thing is you can still grout when they're pressed up and what's called yes. butted up against each other. You yeah. can still grout. You can put the grout over the non grout like Yeah, the just the put it on the seams. seams. Yeah. yeah. And so, so it'll just... And that's just an option if you want. Mm -hmm. We did that on our accent wall. In our bathroom. In our bathroom. It's yeah. the it's the master bathroom. We use the rectangle tiles. The, the gray ones. The gray luxury tiles. Actually, I'll show you right here. Yeah, we have one. Yeah. This one. So. So when we use these tiles, mm -hmm. we just put them together. We didn't grout. We didn't, excuse me, um, space. Use spacers. We didn't use spacers. We just grouted them. And we just uh, put it together. And in the yeah. seams, like where they were, we just put some grout. And um, even though they weren't on the they weren't on the floor, but it was just so that moisture wouldn't get behind them because we didn't want them to come off. And it was in the bathroom, and so there's a lot of steam that's going on in the bathroom. And the funny thing is, we didn't know uh, beforehand what we were doing. We just yeah. did it, yeah, actually, and it it worked out great because of the fact that we used that adhesive uh, along with grouting. Uh, the tile and that, that was, was butted up, and that was on the wall, and it was that's, on the wall. That's on the wall. So it actually worked as a ceiling. Yes. So, so for those of you who um, want to use peel and stick, you don't have to grout unless that's your preference. You can use spacers and use it just like how you would lay down ceramic tile, except that all you have to do is peel and stick it, and then you use um, grout that is formulated for peel and stick tile. So it's already pre-mixed. You're not using like contractor grade grout. You're yeah. just using some that's in a small container. Small container. Yeah. And it works great. It, it works great. It's easy to clean up. Oh my gosh. Um yeah. you can re-grout if you if you like spilled something really bad. But I will I will say bad or anything. You definitely have to get that grout up like quickly. So sort, of, sort of quickly. Like when you're grouting. And you're wiping oh, it wiping on, yeah. Process. When you're wiping yeah, the process, mm -hmm. so if you're wiping it on your tile, make sure that you grout and wipe at the same time. So right. you have a bucket of water and you're wiping it up because you don't want that grout to dry on your uh, nice fresh peel and stick, stick tile. tile. Yeah. <laughs> your luxury peel and stick tile. So, exactly. Um, now we'll get into a question that we get: Is is it renter friendly? Is peel and stick tile renter friendly? And that's a, that's a tricky question yeah. because all of the applications that we try to use the peel and stick, we want it to stay down for a while. We do not want it to come up. Yeah. You can use a, a heat gun, a heat gun or, or even a blow, a blow dryer, a blow dryer yeah. and you can blow it mm -hmm. and heat it up, get that adhesive warm and it'll peel off. Mm -hmm. But I'm not really sure of how what it will leave the the surface underneath. Yeah. So that's just something to consider. And if you're renting, if you're renting, yeah. and you want it temporary, one thing that we have suggested um, when people wanted to use the tile for an accent wall, not for flooring, but for an accent wall, we recommend putting like a. Uh, what you would think is an underlayment or a faux wall mm -hmm. and then putting the tile on the faux wall. So when you're done, you just pull that wall out. Yeah. It doesn't affect your actual walls, you know, your drywall mm -hmm. and your, your walls. So you're not ripping any of the tiles off the wall when you pull them off. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, if, if you don't know how to do the work to fix the tile, I mean, to fix the wall, then, you know, this really helps you if you don't want to go through that hassle. Right. Which, mm -hmm. You know, um, when we decided to put the tiles on the wall for our bathroom, it um, our bathroom has like a what is that um, kind slanted. of ceiling? Yeah, a yeah, like a cathedral ceiling. Yeah, like a slanted ceiling. Yeah, the so mm -hmm. all of the wall area above the mirror, we were fine. We're not going to, we're not going to need to do anything with that again, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, and if we and if we do, we'll probably put more peel and stick tile on there. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. All right. So let's see. 
The only uh, other question that we were asked, well, it's kind of a two part is one, how do you start when you were laying peel and stick tile? Where do you start? How do you start? Mm -hmm. And then how do you determine how much you need? So um, the first part is you met, well, the part- Who said where you start? So well, first where we, we start, yeah, we can tell them where we start. Yeah. <laughs> so how we start is we always lay the tiles out in the room. Mm -hmm. That gives us an idea of how it's gonna look. So we de we decide on the pattern shape. We decide on the the, the location as far as if it's, it's going to be this way or if it's going to be that way. So um, it also helps us with the cuts along the wall, yes. or if there's like for our kitchen, the uh, uh, the island, the island. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you lay out your tiles, and it, we call it a dry layout. Mm -hmm. So we just lay the tiles out all out on the floor. Yeah. And we're adjusting them and seeing like which way looks best mm -hmm. uh we recommend that because then you can know where you start some people say start in the middle some people will say start at the left corner of your room um and that's that's a little bit harder when you have an odd shaped room or you have a lot of things in it even even in a, a small bathroom because you have the toilet there you have the vanity you have a lot of things going on well i could tell you from in our back in our kitchen yeah we started in the it wasn't exactly the center but i started one space away from the middle of our uh, island because it went from one end of the room to the other end of the room. So I had a full row. And so that's how I started that right. particular uh, project. And then we looked to see um, where we would have to cut the tile when it hit the wall. something like, yeah. because what you we don't call want, those special cuts. Yeah. Because what you yeah. don't want is like a little sliver of cut that you have maybe a small gap and the end of the tile went there. And now you're going to have to cut this little teeny part. So what you would do is just move your center center point. Mm -hmm. And I hope, I hope that helps with how you start, you know, your tile. I um, mean, it really varies. I mean, the funny thing about it, when you're doing DIY, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you have to do it in the center. It has to be, yeah. you know, 20 something inches here and 30 here. It doesn't, you don't have to do all You can that. just do what you want. Yeah. <laughs> That's the funny thing about it. That's what we did. It's do it. And it works. It, it will come out great. Yeah. It's do it yourself yeah. and do it how you want with that <laughs> D-H-O-W or yeah. something like that. Do it how you want. Yeah. Do it how you want. <laughs> I mean, it's going to turn out great. You know why? Yes. Because you're the person who's doing it and you're going to put all, all of your effort into it. And that's what we do with our videos. We try mm -hmm. to show you guys that we're putting everything into it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it can be nice for you. Exactly. Um, the other thing is. To calculate how much you need, you would measure your longest length of the room and your longest width. And then you multiply that in feet. And that's how you would get your square footage. Because on the boxes they'll um, of tile, they'll say this covers like 30 square feet. Yeah. So you want that's how you would determine. And what you can do is multiply that number by 1.1. And that'll give you 10% 10%. more yeah. of your tiles. So if you did your, your bathroom floor and it came out to 30 square feet, then you'd multiply that by 1.1. So you have a few extra tiles. And you may say, well, why would you need extra tiles? Well, one. Mistakes. Yeah. Lots of mistakes. If it's your first time, if, if it's you're your first time that. doing something, you're gonna make a mistake. Maybe you should multiply it one point two. One point two, yeah, exactly. Um, because you'll have to cut it. Um, sometimes you may have cut the wrong end, or yeah, that's been done before. Yeah, it's it's a lot <laughs> yeah. of cuts around the edges. You'll be good when you're you know laying it down on the on the on the spots that are just the clear space. But when you get to those around the toilet yeah. and around the vanity it can get a, around the corner yeah the threshold it can get a little the shelves uh, i mean just little cabinets, you know, cabinets and, stuff, and yeah. shelves things like that yeah <laughs> it can get a little but the cool thing about peel and stick is that you can use certain tools that make it easy we use shears we use a, uh, a utility tunnel, knife yeah. we use the dremel the, you, yeah, the box cutter is the yeah, best. Box cutter is a utility knife. By far. So yes. We, we even we even have a video on that. Mm -hmm. And the key with using a box cutter and cutting peel and stick tile is to make sure that your blade is sharp. Yes. Yes, you have to have a, a sharp blade. Yeah, you can't that use works your, best. That old that old box cutter that you found <laughs> in, the, in the garage. And the cool thing about it is that they sell uh blades in packs now. 
So yes. you can get those. Mm -hmm. And he shows you, Dare shows you how to replace the blades as well. So mm -hmm. that if you have different kinds of box cutters, you'll know how to replace your blade. So it could be nice and sharp and the project will go much faster and much easier. Yes. And the way that peel and stick is going now, I think it's between like 50 cents a tile to $2 a tile, maybe. I think that's about the rate now. Mm -hmm. So you can do a small bathroom floor easily under $300. Mm -hmm. And that's with the tile. That's if you grout. That's if you if you had none of the, the products. Tools you or, have, yeah, you have yeah. to get the box cutter. You have to get the um, grout. You have to get the grouter, um, a bucket, a sponge, everything. I forgot what that's called too. I know what you're talking. <laughs> She's talking about the, the utensil the grout, that you use. The grouter. To grout. Yeah. <laughs> so now I just forgot myself. But, yeah. but um, so that's what we wanted to go over is some of the questions that we we get about peel and stick. So if you guys have any other please uh, any other questions, please leave them in the comment section and yeah. we will answer them. Yeah. But I think do we do we get all of them? Do you start tiling? Adhesive, tiling over tile. I think we route. did everything. Do you guys have any questions for us? I mean, we're here live with you. Yeah. And we're ready to answer any questions when it comes to peel and stick. If you have something, let us know. Uh -huh. We we'll might have answered it. And if you mm -hmm. and if you have some after you think of some, just leave it in the comments and we'll definitely get back with you. So now it's time to announce our giveaway winner. Oh yeah. At 901, we picked the uh the YouTube comment picker picked it. Yeah. And I'm going to read what they said and then we'll announce their name. Well, someone asked, what are uh, our next projects and videos oh. are coming up next? Wait a minute, you know, we have a pause. Yes. Yeah. So some of our videos, I mean, some of our projects next is our daughter's room makeover. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. going to be interesting. We have a so, little surprise mm -hmm. in that one, too. And then um, the actual floor, we will show the vinyl plank flooring, and that's a whole nother process. So we have the peel and stick vinyl, mm -hmm. and then now the vinyl plank flooring. And so if- But this one is not the, the rectangle one. This is the, this is the- Oh, for our daughter? Yeah. Yeah. It's different. It's different than the one that we had, we did for our son. The, that's the longer, the planks. This one is more square type planks. Right. It's like yeah, the yeah. rectangle, but they're more square. No, they're rect. The rect. I know that they're sounds weird, but they're yeah. rectangle. Pla yeah. They're rectangle, not planks. The planks, not planks. They're no. more. Is it plankscy? They're planks. fatter, <laughs> <laughs> and they're yeah. different. And and so it's like, well, why are people going to vinyl plank? Like, what is going on? Like, wh why aren't they doing wood tiles? Mm -hmm. I mean, not wood tile, but wood planks and mm -hmm. things like that. Well, one is that vinyl planks are so uh, much easier to clean, and they're very durable. They're water resistant, scratch resistant, waterproof. Um, and one of the questions I think was, what do you clean it with? So with vinyl products, they recommend a, a pH neutral cleaner mm -hmm. like Zep or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I'll be honest with you guys, um, during COVID, I, I was washing everything with Lysol. Yeah. And that's, so, a, that's considered a harsh cleaner, but our vinyl... Our vinyl flooring stood the test of time. It it was fine. Mm -hmm. um, so that worked for us. Yes. So that's what we chose um, to do. Oh, another thing people mm -hmm. sometimes ask is mm -hmm. about organic cleaners. You know, people sometimes mi mix their cleaners at home and use lemon and different products like that. And for vinyl flooring, it said that that is a little bit too acidic. Yeah. So I don't know if it'll affect the the, the coating yeah, yeah the coating I of the does. tile or anything mm -hmm. like that because it's um i think it can cause it to peel over time yeah. it'll cause it to crack and peel Maybe, because yeah. the acidic will dry and it'll crack it yeah so we pretty much don't yeah. yeah you don't want to do that so um i don't know i don't have a, a recommended but like sometimes i like to put things in the the water that makes it smell good and make the room smell good so mm -hmm. I don't know. I just try to clean it and disinfect it. And that's why I love the vinyl products that are out there now. Okay. okay. All right. Any more questions? Any questions? All right. Here is our winner. This person said, 
I love your DIY videos. I yeah. like that you give detailed explanations and tips. Mm -hmm. The thing that I loved most is that y'all do your DIY projects with your kids, especially your daughter. Watching and learning from your DIY reminds me when I was growing up, I would work with my dad on different renovations. My next DIY project is renovating the bathroom with my fiance and I. And so our winner is it's Sue. Sue. Sound. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Sue is Sue. the winner, so please, um, we will be contacting you for validation so that mm. we can get that hundred dollar Lowe's gift card to you, yep. and you can go towards your bathroom renovation. We would love to see it. Yeah. We love to hear about all your DIY projects, and um, we're, we're excited for you. Yes, and we yeah. we're just we we just are glad to see people mm. trying new things and. Yeah. If you'd like to see some more behind the scene things, behind the scene um, pictures of us and different things, we're learning Instagram. So you can go on over there at DIY Power Couple on Instagram. On Instagram. We're also on Facebook. We're also we're on, on Facebook. So we yeah. would love to, you know, connect with you guys there. Mm -hmm. We post different things. So we just want to thank you guys. Congratulations, Sue. Yes, congratulations, Sue. Thank you all for coming on. We really appreciate our you guys. First this is our very first you know, YouTube live. live. YouTube live. <laughs> it's our first live everything. Yes. So we just are thankful for you all who have joined us, and we appreciate you. Yes, so much. We're, we are learning this together, um, and we'll have more things that we're going to be doing. We hope to have more lives just engage with our community even more and please let us know what you like to see like what type of projects um in the spring we will be doing some outdoor projects yeah um uh, with like gardening and uh landscaping yeah and, and shed and shed oh we also we have that shed one yeah we also <laughs> have some more furniture diys because mm. we're going to be doing a like we found a thrift dresser yeah thrift store dresser and we're mm -hmm. going to try to do something special for our daughter with that yeah uh so let us know more lives please definitely yeah. let yeah. us know what you want us to talk about in the lives because exactly. that helps we, us out yeah we look at your yeah. comments we do look at your comments is as much as we can and we want to answer it because when we were on our diy journey mm -hmm. youtube helped us a lot yeah. like we were so thankful for YouTube and for the DIYers on Let there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take a moment. Yeah, exactly. For all the DIYers that helped us mm -hmm. to make our home a little bit better than before. I mean, the thing I like about it, especially with Peel and Stick, is that it's budget friendly and economical. It doesn't cost a lot. It doesn't, it's not hard to do because mm -hmm. it's just peeling something off and then stick it. And if you don't like where you stuck it, yeah. just take it off and then yeah. put it into another place. You know, that's what I like about it. And peel and stick is great for, um, if you have like a camper, if you have, oh, yeah. um, RVs, campers, uh, uh rent rental properties. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends that have rental properties really like the durability of peel and stick. So it's just, it's, it's very versatile. And if you haven't tried mm -hmm. it out, you know, try it in a small area. Yeah. Uh, a laundry room is a great little place or a small bathroom. And as you see, we put it on the floor. We put it on the wall. Stairs. And, and stairs, actually. And the number one place I wanted to put it on is the ceiling. Yes. So I'm going to try that. You're going to try that. Yeah, I'm going to try that. You All know, right. It's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. More lives, please. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to see a backsplash tile in the kitchen. Yeah, we have we have one backsplash. We need to do another one. Yeah, in the kitchen. Right, um, we do it that's some. nice, and we'll have some outdoor projects. So thank you guys. Yeah. We will be doing some more. We're gonna put this up, this live up on our uh, channel, and we hope that you guys have a blessed week. Yeah, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Huh? And, oh, we have to say this. Oh, and we want to <laughs> remember. <laughs> You, you can, can DIY, DIY too. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, bye. guys.